back to the notes here, I just want to review one part about links. I'm going to skip all the notes uh, on our way to page 14, which is our destination here. But what I want to do right now is just take a second to talk about linked files and linked views. Last week we talked about how when you're making your site plan, the annotations for your site plan will be in your site model. So you've got your building model on the one side, you've got your site model on the other. First of all, you open up the site, link the building into the site, move it into the right place, and you publish coordinates from the site to the building. Then you turn around, and like I've done here, you link, you open up the building and link the site back into the building after the building's been placed, and voila, your site appears in the right location with respect to the building, and in any of the views, when you open up your building now, after you've had shared coordinates published to it, you can, in your plans properties, uh, switch the orientation to true north, and you will see the building sitting on the site as you rotated it to put it into place. Now here you'll notice that in my site plan here in the building, I'm not seeing my annotations from the site. So if we go to page 12, we'll talk about that right now. We talked about it last week, but I just want to reiterate the, the, the need here to, to deal with this. So you've got a, a view in your building, because it's the building where you create the sheets. You've got a view in here called site plan. And so what we need to do is change the settings of this view so that the annotations from the linked file will appear. So your visibility graphics, uh, go to the Revit links tab and get your site model to show its site plan view. So now the annotations that were done in the site plan are going to appear and there they are. So I didn't put in the um, uh, the tags for the property line boundaries, those are available in the session one folder if you want to grab them so I could go back and tag these folders or tag these uh, property lines rather and they'd show up here uh, in my building model uh, now that it's linked in. Alright, so we are going to move on to page 14 and talk about design options. Now in a few moments you guys will be working on uh, carrying the file that you've got done right now with uh, phasing. You're going to carry that forward and you're going to do design options. So let's talk about design options and what it's all about. So typically if you had different plan ideas or design ideas that you were working on for a project in AutoCAD, you'd just do a save as. Right? You'd work up a plan, you had a different idea for the plan, you'd do a save as. Or maybe you'd do it with layers. I don't know how you'd do it. Uh, in Revit they have a really nifty feature called design options, uh, which will allow you to have all those different potential layouts for the building or different design concepts all in the same file. So let's talk about how that's set up. So if you folks want to right now uh, close all your windows so you've only got the uh, one window open of your of the um, the phasing exercise open. Open up a new architectural template project and we're going to go through the process of creating design options. So close all those other tabs. So you only have the two tabs open. One tab from the phasing exercise and then this new tab, uh, uh, architectural template. So when you go to control N, choose the architectural template from the list and here we are. Now, with design options, you have sort of different 
different modes that you're going to be working in. So here's kind of a map of how design options is going to work. Most of the project will be unchanged and left in a group of objects which Revit calls the main model. Nothing about it is going to be changed. Now let's suppose for a second that in um, not like parallel to the, the bulk of the building, which is the, the main model, you're also going to be working on some kitchen layouts, some different ideas for laying out the kitchen. And so you might have a galley style. Uh, you might have an open style kitchen uh, with um, a separate room for what they call a, the dirty kitchen for people cooking with a wok. Uh, then you might have a third shape, which is L-shaped. So you've got these three different layouts for the kitchen that are all going to be in the same spot. Uh, meanwhile, you might have another set of concepts that you're working on right now, uh, which might be the upstairs bedrooms. And you might be looking at some different layouts for the floor plan upstairs, where you have master at the front, and you might have another one where the master is at the rear of the house. So the upstairs bedroom layout, it's up for grabs. Kitchen layout, it's up for grabs. But the most of the project is not really under consideration. It's just these two general areas that we're not sure about and we're trying to work it out. So, the way it works is that with design options, you are working in the main model or you work in any one of these design options for the project. So you talk between either working in the main model or working in one of the options. Now, this thing here, which is the title of the different design ideas for the project, is called an option set. And then each one of these Competing ideas is called an option. So an option set doesn't actually contain any geometry. It's the title of the different options and, and, and what's kind of being resolved. So in this case, the kitchen layouts, the title, the option set itself contains the three different options within it, each with their own layout of walls and cabinets and so on. Same up here. The option set then contains two or more options that you are trying to resolve as the design process continues. So you either work in the main model or one of the options, and you just choose which one you're working on. So the mo most of the time, you'll be working on the main model. So just so you folks can set this up for yourselves and get a feel for it, let's go into Revit here and just draw some walls, just four walls, just like so, just like you did before. So these walls are going to be the main model. Nothing about them is going to change, but we're just going to have some different layouts of rooms inside the building. Now on the Manage tab, we were working with phases before. Now we're working with design options. 
So now you can see it says, now editing the main model. No option sets have been created. So first of all, you create an option set, then you add new options in the set. So let's just create a new option set, and now it gives it a, a generic name for the name of the set, and a generic name for the option underneath that title. So the title here, there it is, option set one. So let's just call this, so click on the title, option set one, and rename it. And we will call this office options. And so you guys will do this again in the exercise. Once you've given the set a comprehensible name, you click on the, <coughs> the title here for this particular option that belongs to this set and you give it a descriptive name as well. So once you've clicked on the option set and renamed it, then you click on our first option here and you rename it as well. And we'll just call it at side. So yeah, you could just have one design option, but that's not usually what you're doing. You're gonna add a second option and we're going to rename it at the rear. So we've got these two different layouts. So we have one option set right now with two options in the set. So you've set up your design options. Now we are good to go. Now what you folks will notice is down at the bottom of the screen here, there is now a new flyout. And you will see that you can select to work on the main model, which is the default mode, or you can switch to the one of the two options that we just created under this set. And you folks will see you can't actually select the gray thing, which is the name, which is the option set. So going back to design options here, you can't work in an option set. You work in one of the options in the set. You guys will get the hang of it. It sounds like incomprehensible English. So here, switch to at side, and now you notice that the, the main model grays out. So the idea being that you're now working on a layout of walls and such in this option. So grab your wall tool and just draw a few walls along the side of the building. And you can put some doors in there as well. There we go. So there's your walls and doors in this option, the one that's called at side. Now, if you now switch to the other option at rear, the main model is still grayed out. That other geometry disappears. And now we can add some new walls along the back of the building and add some doors as well. So it's like being able to turn a particular plan on and another plan off. You can switch between different plans for your project. So there you go. So all of this geometry is located in the same space. I mean, it's overlapping, but they don't interact. So when you create design options in your project, so when you create an option set, all of the options within that set do not interact with each other. And that way you can keep those, those plans separate. But we also have the main model, the part of the building that's going to carry on no matter what we decide as the team. 
as to where the, the plan is actually going to go. Now you notice that when you switch back to the main model uh, mode here, so like I said, you can either work on one of them on the main model, or you can work on one of the options within one of the option sets. So going back to the board here, you either work on the main model or one of the options in one of your option sets. You can have as many different option sets as you want. You can have as many options within each option set as you want. I think the most I've ever seen on a project is like six options in one set. And I've seen projects that have four or five different option sets. Usually you have one or two. So, why is it, yes? Yes, the question is, can you make it so that the main model doesn't show any of the options? So if I go into my design options here, can I make it so one of the options is show nothing? Certainly. So what you do is you click on the option set where you, you want that to happen, and you add a new option. And then we go click on the option and rename it, and we'll call it show nothing. Now you folks will notice that one of these options is primary. Uh, within every option set, one of the options will be primary. You, you can't, there's no option. That's it. <laughs> You're forced to do that. Uh, one of your options within a set will be primary. So right now, if I wanted this view to show nothing, if we folks, if we switch to the show nothing option here uh, in our office options set, nothing's there because we haven't drawn anything. So in main model mode, how can I get Revit to not show any of that geometry? Well, let's show one way you can do it. Go to your visibility dialog box. So as soon as you folks have turned on this design options feature by going into the design options and, and creating your first option set. Revit will now add a tab, a design options tab, to every one of the views in your project. And each of the option sets will list as different rows on the left hand side. Now for each option set that you've created, Revit will give you the option of either showing the automatic option set, which is the primary, or you can go in here and choose one of your own. If you choose automatic, Revit shows the primary option for that set. And presumably, the primary option within any option set is the one that you think the client is going to like the best, or the one that you think makes the most sense for the design. So, in visibility graphics on the design options tab, we could force this view to show that particular option in the set that has no geometry in it. You could do it that way. Alternatively, we could leave all of that alone so that the view is still using the automatic mode for showing that option set. And instead, in design options, we could ask Revit to make this option primary. So you can choose which one of the options is kind of the, the main option, make it primary. Revit might grouse at you a little bit. You could ignore the warnings, generally speaking, and move on. So now, the primary option is the show nothing option, and nothing will appear unless you go to your visibility find that particular off, uh, option set, and ask Revit to show one of the other options for that set. So now we're asking this view, instead of rolling with the primary option, which was, you know, not show anything, because we didn't model anything in this view. So here, you know, if I switch to that mode now, look at this. How come Revit's not showing 
nothing right now? Well, because the view has been forced to look at one of those design options. If you leave, uh, if you keep all of your option sets in a given view, set to automatic mode, then what can happen is that the view will roll with the flyout menu that you choose at the bottom. So once you've locked a view in the visibility graphics dialog box, once you've locked a particular option set in to looking at one of those options, then that's what the view will always show you. But if the, uh, the setting is automatic, then Revit changes the view so that it will show all of the different options in the set as you change the flyout at the bottom. So if you have three different plan layouts for a particular floor plan, you're like, well, I don't want to have to switch between them at the bottom. That's dumb. I just want to print it off, show it to the client. No problem. So what you do is you'd make copies of your views. So this one here, I'll just rename it. Side and this one here, I'll rename it and I'll call it nothing because that's going to be the one that doesn't. And I'll copy it again. And this one will be the one that shows the offices at the back. So I've got three different copies of the floor plan and I'm going to get each one of them to point at a separate design option. So in this one here, my so-called nothing option, I'll go to my visibility graphics and ask it to point to the nothing option. And then for my rear option here, I'll go to visibility. And again, notice that I'm clicking once on the views in the project browser so that I, I don't actually have to open these views. I click on the view in the browser. It's selected. I go over to visibility graphics for that view and change the design options. So same here. I click on the level one rear, go to visibility graphics, and go to the design options tab and ask it to look at the rear option. And finally, for my side level one view, again, go to visibility graphics and ask it to show the side option. So whether you're working on design options or not now, you can go into each one of these views and see what you want to see in those plan views. So you can print them off at a moment's notice and ship them off to the client or print them off uh, and get a hard copy whenever you need it. So we're on uh, page 14 right now. Let's go over to uh, page 15. Now, what I am going to do right now, and you folks should do the same, switch back to the main model, and we're just going to add a couple more walls into the project here. So just grab the wall tool and just grab, uh, add some walls along the, uh, the front of the building. And make sure that these walls that you're adding now uh, wouldn't intersect with any of the other walls uh, in the various different uh, uh, options that we've been working on so far. So all of this geometry that you can see right now is in the main model because that's the mode that we've chosen down at the bottom here. Now what I want you folks to do is just select those walls that you've just created that are in the main model. They're not in one of the design options. And I want you to notice at the bottom of the screen here that right beside the design options flyout, there's a button here that's called add to set. What this does is it allows you to add geometry from the main model into one or more options in one of your option sets. So right now, if I had six different option sets at the top menu here, this would drop down and show me all the different option sets that have been defined in the project so far, and I choose one of them. And then I would choose which options in that option set are going to get this geometry that I've just selected. So I've got those two walls selected. So now I can copy 
this geometry from the main model. So what happens is it gets taken away from the main model and copied into as many of these options as I wish. So I can copy it to all three of them or I can copy it to just two of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy it to the last two and not the first one. And you're just going to see what happens. Actually here, I'm going to, because um, what am I in? I'm in the side option right now, so I'm going to hide it from that one. So Revit's going to copy these walls to those two options. And it, it disappeared from the main model. So the add to set removes geometry from the main model and copies it into the uh, design options that you want it to go to. So now when I go to nothing, there it is. If I go to the rear, there it is. And now I can work on it. Now, this view has been asked by Revit to look at the, this one particular option in the set. Funny though, I can see it, but I can't click on it. Look at the mode. I'm in the main model mode. So when that's the case, I can only work in geometry that is in the main model. Can't touch the stuff in the options. So this is my rear option. I'd have to choose it so I can work on that stuff now. Now you might think, gosh, that's a bit of a hassle. I just wanted to stretch one wall. Okay, fine. You guys see anything around here that might help you out? This box right here, exclude options. So here's the deal. If you're working in the main model, Revit kind of locks down geometry that isn't in the main model, i.e. geometry that is in one of your design options. If you hit the checkbox here, even though you haven't switched to work on a design option, you can now work on that design option and move stuff around and make changes. Until you hit the escape key once. As soon as you hit the escape key once, look what happens. <laughs> you have to go back and hit that checkbox again. So that's what it's for. So on one of these other options here, again, here's my side option. Can't edit it unless I switch to the side option and then the main model grays out. But if I want to make just a little quick change and I'm too lazy to come down here and do the two clicks to switch to the side, I can still just go uncheck and now I can make this change and, and do stuff with it until I hit the escape key. And even just once, checkbox comes back. No big deal. Just switch to that particular option and you can start working on it. So as the project continues, at some point, one, yes? Um, so here's the question. The question is, if you've got design options set up on a project that you're sharing with your colleagues using work sets. What are your other colleagues going to see when you created these option sets? Well, the first time you folks do a save to central, everybody's seeing it. So everyone's going to see those design options and they're going to know what's going on. So in non-dysfunctional offices, where the people talk to each other, someone will do the lip moving thing and tell their colleagues, hey, I've created a, a design option, I've created an option set, here's what I'm doing, you know, don't screw it up. Um, I kid you not, I've been in offices where everybody hated each other so much that putting Revit into that office actually caused about 40% of the people to leave because it was just that toxic in that office. They just left because they did. Something like this obviously requires communication. And Revit increases the amount of communication that's required in the office because you're more tightly integrating the work. So if all your colleagues hate each other, Revit just isn't going to fly. Go back and use AutoCAD because everybody can just work on their own drawings and stick their headphones on and keep hating everybody. But with Revit, there's got to be love, baby. I'm a child of the 70s.
Bring on the love. Bring on the revit. All right, so that's how that works. Now, at some point, you're going to have one option that's going to rule the day. So in any given option set, your client's going to make a decision, you're going to make a decision. At some point, you're going to, you know, fish or cut bait. You're going to want to decide to accept the primary option. So one of these options is going to win. So let's say that it's our rear option here. So we'll make it primary. So it's going to win. And once we're done, we're like, yeah, you know what? This, this rear option, it's going all the way. You choose accept primary. The rear option gets retained. The other options get nuked along with their geometry. And the views that were forced to look at particular options other than the primary option, they will get nuked as well. So Rabbit's just giving you the are you, sh the are you sure talk here. And yes, that's what we want. So yeah, yes. And then Revit says, hey, you've got some views that aren't looking at the primary option. You want to get rid of them? Makes sense. There you go. So that design option, that option set rather, goes away. And everything gets rolled into the main model. So once you accept primary on an option set, the option set goes away, it goes back into the main model, and you're not futzing around with this design option business anymore on this particular option set. Now, of course, if you have other option sets in your project, those will persist until you accept primary on those option sets as well. So that's the Cole's notes on how this design options thing works. And it works really well. There's some things about Revit which are a little hackneyed, but design options isn't one of them, and it works quite well. So uh, go back through the notes and have a look at it. Uh, what I want you folks to do, by next week, uh, on page 17, is the instructions on setting up the design options for these offices. And that way you folks will have a handle, a small handle on how to use design options. The term project must incorporate phasing. The term project, which we'll talk about in two weeks' time, must also incorporate design options. So what we talked about here, phasing and design options, uh, is a required element in the term project and you will lose significant marks in your term project if you do not have phasing or design options built into your project. Uh, next week we have our open book midterm which will be on uh, the desire to learn component of, of uh, BCIT here and we'll do that at the end of the class. Um, You'll have two attempts on that, so again, you'll, you can do one attempt here at, at uh, BCIT and you can do another attempt uh, sometime during the week at home and take another stab at getting a different mark and I'll take the highest of those attempts. Okay, so work on the exercise on page 17. We'll take your questions and that's it for tonight and these videos will get up on YouTube when I get a chance to upload them.